in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you're welcome to another spirit filled message on fifty centric message if you're new to this channel I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted unto you and then God is going to visit you okay thank you for watching be blessed please keep standing my spirit is fired up tonight Jeremiah 17 verse 8 this is a prophecy for someone in this place tonight. Jeremiah 17 verse 8. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters that spreadeth her roots by the river and shall not see when heat comes. Listen. It says, but her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought neither shall cease from yielding fruit lift your voice in one minute and i want you to receive this prophetic word lord i receive it be childlike enough to receive it i receive it as a word from you to me as a word from you to my destiny that i shall be like a tree by the waters I shall spread my roots by the rivers. I will not need to wait for a season to receive nourishment. My roots spread. Father, tonight we ask you to help us. We have come to receive. We have come to grow. We have come to rise. We have come to be blessed. We have come to access the keys of power, the keys of dominion. We have come for nourishment. And I pray, oh God, that by your spirit you will bless us tonight. Our hearts are open. Our hearts are humble. And we are ready to receive. In the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Please be seated. I want us to specially appreciate all those following us online. I think that um, we need to let them know that they are part of us. Go ahead and give them a big God bless you. All those following us online. Praise the Lord. And for those outside, I'm aware the weather is uh, quite cold and um, it was drizzling earlier on. Thank you for your understanding, your sacrifice, and your patience. Let's honor them, those inside. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hallelujah. Extraordinary fruitfulness. I want to challenge you tonight. The Lord put a very fiery message in my spirit. Extraordinary fruitfulness extraordinary fruitfulness Genesis chapter 12 extraordinary fruitfulness one of the things that God has been doing in this place according to the word he gave us this year a year of triumph is that he's been guiding us precept upon precept line upon line helping us to understand the systems of the kingdom let me tell you something one of the best ways you can bless a man is enlightenment one of the best ways you can bless a man is not like we usually say it's not to give him a fish or to give him money or give him a, a shoe or a dress 
all those things are mundane they are carnal they will come and pass a thief can steal it are we together now but enlightenment is intrinsic is lasting it will never change when you enlighten a man to enlighten a man is to create illumination to help the man to access knowledge and understanding in fact let me digress a bit before we start our teaching for tonight I want you to write three words down I was contemplating on these words and thank you Holy Spirit I remember saying that I would share it with us knowledge understanding wisdom these three things we have confused them but they are not the same they work together like the threefold cord that cannot be easily broken knowledge understanding wisdom knowledge means um, the gathering or access to information when you are talking about knowledge you are talking of access to information not necessarily benefiting from it just access to information the moment an information comes to you capable of changing you is called knowledge now understanding is different from knowledge in that understanding talks about comprehension not just access comprehension the fortitude to comprehend the moment you are talking of understanding understanding talks about comprehension A comprehension of the underlying principles that are responsible for that outcome listen nothing ever happens on its own in this earth nothing ever happens evil or good nothing ever happens on its own hallelujah miracles do not happen just like that tragedies do not just happen failure does not just happen success does not just happen the anointing does not just come people don't just backslide there is always um, certain operations that are initiated whether in ignorance are we together now if I kick this speaker by mistake the pain will not refuse to come to my leg and say I think it's a mistake as far as the system of pain is concerned I did it intentionally are we together now so in ignorance we have activated a lot of spiritual laws and discoordinated them and we have become victims victims of the interplay of those laws it's like cutting a naked wire and putting it on your head by mistake when it's raining now whether you are aware or not the wire will not excuse that mistake will it shock you yes understanding the Bible says with all your getting get understanding we celebrate knowledge so much but let me tell you knowledge without understanding is the same thing as not knowing it at all the lot of one who just has knowledge without understanding and the lot of one who does not have knowledge at all is the same their destinies will eventually be the same doom so it's not enough to access knowledge as good as it is access to an information capable of changing you is not enough you must be able to understand the dynamics of its operation this is where understanding comes in gathering the ingredients to make rice does not produce rice it shows you that there is a potential for you to enjoy delicious rice but with the availability of that ingredients you can mess that entire you can waste those ingredients to look like they were not there because there is no understanding it is understanding that will tell you when to apply what one careless mistake and you produce something else that's how life is it's not enough for us to just have knowledge I know I know I know that in the economy of God people should be blessed I know that people can be anointed yes I'm aware I know that people can grow I know that demons are real I know that restoration is real I know that tithing and offering helps people to be blessed that level of knowledge has too much vagueness there is no comprehension of the dynamics 
Tithing blesses people, but what is the operation behind it? Restoration is a possibility, but what is the key that activates it? Rising from glory to glory, excelling in the midst of recession is a possibility. Rising without any support, uncle, auntie, whatsoever is possible. But do you understand the dynamics that activate it? Favor is a provision in the kingdom. But do you have, do you have an understanding? Do you have a comprehension? You see, let me tell you something. Anything you cannot reproduce again and again, you do not understand. It's as simple as that. It is possible to have a short-term result based on pure luck. Pure luck. You play a football by mistake and it's cause a goal. It's still a goal, but you may not be able to repeat it again. An example of that rice, you can mix nonsense and by mistake, things just fall in place and you produce a delicious meal, but you cannot reproduce it again. Now, let me tell you something. Many believers, including spiritual people, are largely celebrators of knowledge, celebrators of access to spiritual information. Oh, I know the book of this and that and that. It says this should happen. And they say, wow, what a, an intelligent quarter of scripture. Cain and Abel had access to the same materials, but their combinations produced an effect that brought woe to one and made another person's sacrifice acceptable. You must cry for understanding. You must cry for understanding. And then wisdom talks of application. You see that? Knowledge talks of an acquisition of information, useful information, strategic information. Understanding talks of the comprehension of the dynamics. How to make it produce result. Then wisdom is now the experiential application of what you know. Understanding a thing and not having the commitment to apply it until it produces result is still nonsense. Bible tells us that the word of God can be made of non-effect. It says the word did not profit them, those who heard it, not being mixed with faith. Not that what they had was wrong, but it was not mixed with action. Responses of obedience to validate that they believe God. Please pay attention to what I'm saying. Very simple keys, but they are responsible for the pain of so many people. Very simple keys, but they can be responsible for the retrogression of a man for ages. Hallelujah. So knowledge talks about the acquisition of information. Understanding talks of the comprehension, the dynamics, the working principles that produce that result. So you are not just seeing an effect or whatever it is. You understand the underlying principle. And then wisdom is the ability to apply it so that you now get a tangible result. Knowing that fasting and prayer will help you grow. That's just understand. That's just knowledge. Knowing what in fasting and what in prayer makes you grow is understanding then engaging it sincerely and passionately so that your life becomes the result of all that gist is wisdom. You can know it, you can teach it, and never walk in it. Now, this is the challenge with men in the body of Christ. There is hardly, I, I've, I've said it again and again, that I, am, I don't think that the body of Christ is in ignorance. The challenge of the body is not ignorance. By the grace of God, we have gone past the realm of ignorance. There's almost no dimension of the system and the realities of the kingdom that you bring to the body of Christ that people will be shouting as though they've never heard it. No. It may just be presented in another way, maybe more intelligently or more comprehensively, in more detail and clarity, articulated more, more intelligently. But generally, they understand, they have an idea that such a dimension is in the kingdom but very few people are able to walk in it and God has declared for us that this is a year of triumph I don't want you see knowledge is to know 
understanding is to hear the message wisdom is to engage it and then you see the results in your life if you don't see the result in your life you will be frustrated first in the secret and then later on the frustration will so build you cannot hide it again it will become clear that this thing is frustrating you like many people are already giving up this is half of the year already and many people are just packing up and saying lord this thing doesn't work no your not understanding it is what makes it look like it doesn't work i can switch this mic off And, and think because I switched it off it doesn't work no there is a system knowing that you can use a mic to amplify your voice is just knowledge understanding the dynamics of his operation a comprehension of the same that's understanding then switching it on and using it now qualifies me to enjoy the blessing I can hold a mic I can draw it I can snap with it and never amplify my voice. Please, I want you to be frustrated. Um, not, I don't mean it in a negative way, but I, I want you, I think a better word is to be dissatisfied with acquisition of so many spiritual informations with less than 10% of them experientially manifesting in your life. Nobody works well under such a condition. Hallelujah. We must cry for knowledge. It's better for me to know God 10% and have an experience of him 7%. That's an A student in the spirit because you are gauged based on what you know than to claim to know God 60% and your result shows 2%. That's a very terrible situation. Some even claim 90% and the result is 1%, 1 the experience. vet your spiritual life to make sure you are really getting this thing if you are not getting it stop running retreat and find out where did i miss it i've just been acting acting without understanding lord where have i missed it because you see life will test you and force you to reveal whether you understand this word or not hallelujah but the Bible says the light shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. It is my desire from the depth of my heart that many of us are going to begin to produce extraordinary results in our lives. Don't let anyone ever fool you that it does not matter. Sooner or later you will see that God's obsession is in our bearing fruit. Hearing, John 15 verse 8. Hearing is our father glorified when you bear much fruit right so shall you be my disciples that is the proof that you have been listening to me sisters if you give birth to a baby and you've been breastfeeding this baby every day for one year two years three years and then the baby cannot walk cannot grow cannot talk what happens to the mother do you celebrate the child and say it's all right i know you are coming up no you know there is a problem so when you have been taking the milk of the world the meat of the world the bones of the world and eventually no growth no result no transformation something is wrong something is wrong there is a difference between the weight in faith and the weight hopeless waiting that is as a result of you're not even knowing what you are doing are we together like a farmer plants he knows by the dry season there's a bumper harvest waiting for him so he waits in hope he waits in faith but someone who never went to the farm if he starts buying bags waiting for september that's not a wise man please learn this nothing just happens everything that must happen in your life and my life will require you engaging the mysteries of the kingdom engaging the mysteries of the kingdom not random engagement engaging the mysteries of the kingdom you understand the mysteries that have been apportioned to deliver the results you want 
the results you want. Hallelujah. Let's get down to the business of tonight. Extraordinary fruitfulness. One time, Jesus was on his way doing his father's business and the Bible says that he saw a fig tree and the leaves were green. It looked very attractive. And then the Bible says that Jesus came very hungry. He came hoping to find something to eat. And when he came in hunger, he saw that tree blossoming. Yet there was no fruit. And then the Bible says he cursed the tree. Cursed it and spoke over it that no fruit will grow there again. The Bible there shows us how it grieves the heart of the father to see a believer, a ministry, a family, a people, an individual who cannot produce evidences that validate that God is alive. Fruitfulness is a big deal to God. Fruitfulness is a big deal to God. It's not just a proof that you are growing. Fruitfulness is a sign that God is not a liar. His integrity is at the mercy of your fruitfulness to be validated here on earth that he is not a liar. God is a God that expects fruitfulness. He gave a parable of the talents, Matthew 25. He gave unto one five, two, and one. He expected multiplication. He expected fruitfulness. The first manifestation of the blessing that he gave man is be fruitful. Are we together? Not just subdue, not just have dominion, be fruitful. It was not a suggestion. It was a command. Meaning I have put in you all the resources that will take to produce a life of fruitfulness. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord had said to Abraham, this is the Lord having an encounter with an idol worshiper whose life is about to change, who will epitomize greatness for the believer, who will become the portrait of God's idea of greatness, a portrait of God's idea of a blessed man, a portrait of God's idea of success, a portrait of God's idea of a balanced Christian life that is both useful to the advancement of the kingdom and at the same time to humanity. He says, now the Lord had said unto Abraham, get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and from thy father's house unto a land that I will show you. Verse 2. As at this time, this was, this was not yet his experience. It was God's proposal to him. Come out of a system and submit yourself through a season of dealing. And if you successfully pass through that, this will be the result. Verse 2. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3 and then we'll stop there. And I will bless them that bless thee. And curse him that cursed thee. And in thee shall how many? All the families of the earth be blessed. In you, through you, with reference to you as a foundation, as a cornerstone. The entire race, the entire globe will be blessed. Now, i like us to observe certain things here. God meets an idol worshiper with his philosophies, with his ideas. Are we together now? Having a little influence, you would call him a local champion. He was not a weak man. He was not a failure as it were. An idol worshiper. And then he tells him, let's go to verse 1 again. Abraham, number one, your name is wrong. Number two, your life, your philosophies, everything. I thought he would just beat him and say, Abraham, I have great plans for you. The thoughts that I have for you, even if you know it, I mean, he said, Abraham, the first requirement will be to leave 
your status quo your system listen in the economy of God and in the dealings of God when God begins to do business with a man he never uses you as you are please understand this you come as you are but you are never sent as you are you come as you are and then the first thing God proves in you is humility and meekness the beginning of the dealings of God in the life of a man the, the starting point is when God sees that there is sufficient grace for humility and teachability this man was not a failure this man was a local champion in his own respect an idol worshiper a diviner an invoker of the heavens could manipulate strange powers to his advantage and here comes a word from a deity who calls himself the God of the Hebrews and he says Abraham get thee out you know how painful it is get thee out Abraham I know this philosophy has worked for you but before I introduce a higher perspective get thee out I preached a message years ago from this scripture called come out of your father's house now many believers in the kingdom please listen carefully many believers in the kingdom when we come to God number one we come with our pride hoping that we are okay by ourselves then number two we hope that he will only add to what the garbages that culture the garbages that our mistakes our failures have given to us and we say Lord I am here um, let's just continue the classes and God says I don't know who that lecturer was but when I come to you even if you have been 10 years in this business my first requirement is that I isolate you you have to come out of that system you have to come out of that way of doing things we're talking about fruitfulness let's understudy Abraham very carefully because the Bible tells us please give us Isaiah 51 and verse 1 and 2 the Bible gives us an assignment that every time we want to study success fruitfulness greatness in the kingdom he gives us a figure he personifies God's idea of a life of impact in a figure and then he, this is what he says um, let's go to verse 2 he says look unto Abraham understudy him look unto Abraham your father and unto Sarah that bear you he says for I called him alone huh? and blessed him you see God is speaking in summary but it didn't happen as immediate as that I called him I blessed him I increased him three things I called him I blessed him I increased him I called him I blessed him I increased him this is knowledge when you now begin to seek understanding you know that it's not just I called him I blessed him that call in its own is a subject that is worth studying Abraham leave your father's house that's part of I called him are we together now and then it says I blessed him and increased him in other words he is my idea of a man truly called of God he's my idea of a man truly blessed of God and he's my idea of a man who has experienced increase then he says look unto him if you want to experience his result that order of fruitfulness look unto him I hope you know Abraham experienced barrenness in his life physical barrenness and that qualifies him to truly be a replica or a portrait of God's idea of fruitfulness when God calls you listen to me whether in ministry whether in business whether in career when God calls you you don't answer that call as a champion you don't answer that call as a colleague the moment God calls you he begins to scan through your life until he finds meekness everybody say meekness until he finds humility everybody say humility the first price the first genuine price for fruitfulness is not quoting scripture 
is not even applying principles it's a state of meekness and humility write it down the first requirement anybody who will be fruitful who will produce extraordinary results in his life in your ministry in whatever it is you're doing knowledge is useless to a proud heart knowledge is useless understanding is useless wisdom is useless to a proud heart brothers and sisters i submit to you that there are many proud people in the body of christ proud men of god proud students proud young people are we together now proud elderly people when he calls you he requires humility your humility is your past and then he begins to communicate to you now this looks very simple but you find out how many people want to be great you ask them do you want to be great they say yes I want to be an anointed man I want to carry the anointing I want to carry revelation I want fame I want power no I'm showing you the system of God God's economy and how people are grafted into this enviable dimension of fruitfulness and greatness the foundation is a humble heart the foundation is a humble heart Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord it says let the word of Christ dwell in you richly listen carefully the word of Christ will never be able to pass through the entrance of your heart when there is pride and arrogance pride and arrogance pride and arrogance I know I think I know there are so many people that one single communication of humility would be the key to the next level but I know oh I'm educated enough I know look I'm not a child let me tell you something the moment submission becomes an embarrassment to you is a sign you are not a candidate for fruitfulness at all not just submission to a person submission to doctrines submission to mentorship submission to the teaching ministry of the spirit this I know mentality is the reason why many people keep failing in life I know my father is a pastor or was a pastor I know I was a Bible study coordinator when I was on campus I know I married a pastor my husband is a pastor I know this and that you see all sorts of arrogant people many of us young people are arrogant I know I know what to do I know how to do this and we keep messing up and failing again and again sadly many of our parents I know and they have been balanced bringing forward seasons of failure and repeating it again with this I know mentality there's nothing I know that drives the Spirit of God like a a proud and a haughty and a boastful heart do you want to be fruitful the first key is not just knowledge the first key is not even the leading of the Spirit the first key is a broken and a contrite heart I show you the secret of great men they are they are the fortitude to break down and tremble before God where you lose the ability to argue with God God I, I is it that you have forgotten let me remind you uh -uh. Abraham I know you have servants Abraham I know you have a wife Abraham I know you are a local champion but I'm about to take you to a dimension you never dreamt of first requirement get thee out please give it to us again Genesis 12 verse 1 get thee out of your father's house get thee out of your kindred get thee out of your pride get ye out of your cocoon of boastfulness get ye thee out of your accolades 
I am a this. I've held 10 crusades. I am a man of God. I am so, 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 and so, and so. No. Get thee out of your country. Get thee out of your kindred. Get thee out of your father's house unto a land that I will show you. Are we together? You want to be fruitful. The first key is that disposition of humility. Everybody say, grant me grace to be meek, to be humble, to be broken. Hallelujah. I will never argue with God's opinion. I'm too young, I'm too small, I'm too naive to argue with God's opinion. He's the fountain of wisdom. Some of us have been trading this childlikeness, this, this reckless abandon for years. And look what he's done. Look what he's done. But there are many of us who are too big to learn at his feet. Too big to understand the precepts of the kingdom. And we find out that we keep going around the wilderness almost forever. Number two. Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 still. The second key. Listen. The second key to the journey of fruitfulness the journey of greatness is total trust and confidence. Ah. I will go. I will go. Anywhere you lead me. Yeah. I will go. Lord, I does not owe you explanation as to all the details of the journey the name of the mission is follow me the God I serve will never give you detailed instructions when you meet with God he doesn't start telling you one day he shows you the end and leaves you there he will never tell you what the process will be the mission is follow me why will I leave something I am sure of into something I am unsure of I'm sure of my country. I'm sure of my kindred. I'm sure of my father's house. Are we together? You are sure of your certificate. You are sure of the support of your parents. You are sure that if you fail and there is no job, your elder sister can be giving you 20,000. Then he tells you, come out. To where? A land that I will show you. Do you know what it means to ask an adult, Oga, where are you going? He says, I'm following God. <laughs> he says, I know, I understand where to. And he says, honestly, let me be sincere with you. The only thing I know is the end of this journey. I know that I will become a fruitful man. I know that my name will be great. I will be exceedingly fruitful. That's all I know. The, the dynamics of the journey has not been given to me. But I trust him. But I trust him. Many of you see great people and think God gave them the details. It's faith that opened up the details. Oh. People started ministry. People, God sent people to land. First night, they slept under the bridge. What are you doing in Lagos, sir? God sent me. You are a graduate. Come along with your certificate. He asked me to leave it at home. What are you now doing under the bridge? This is the only place I know in Lagos. Yet God said you will raise a people. Listen. A man who does not trust God will never experience fruitfulness. This our carnal, sensual generation that wants, oh God, you must show me how one plus one becomes two. The mission is follow me. If you trust him enough, follow me. I will go. I will go. You know me, 
I'm a fan of responsibility. I like responsible people. But let me tell you something. Nobody's destiny appears from the beginning. The vision speaks in the end. It is follow me. I asked Jimmy something one time. Jimmy, sorry, <clears throat> let me talk about you again. <clears throat> and Jimmy said something to me one time. He said, there is nothing as powerful as being close to somebody building something great. Nothing looks great from beginning. You only have the architectural plan, which is usually to you alone and maybe a few people. It is at the end when the vision becomes worthy of emulation. Then everybody starts saying, I used to know a Jimmy. I used to know promise. I used to know Pastor Alpha. No, I know them. I remember when we were taking Gary and so on and so forth. You see, we live in a world where we are too obsessed about results before we start. Somewhere along the journey, we should see results. But you will be nasty to ask for results from the beginning of the journey. What you ask for is the word of God. That's the currency you use to start your journey to greatness. Where is the greatness with a patch on your trouser? Where is the greatness with one palms? Where is the greatness when you cannot afford 100 naira to bob your hair? Where is the greatness where the only Bible you can afford is Gideon's International that was given free during evangelism? But I know he called me. I know there is greatness. I, I can't show you where it is. Where are the members? Where is the TV station? Where are the workers? They are in the loins of trust. I trust him. I trust him. My obedience of faith will eventually begin to bring them. God is speaking to someone who has refused to move for years because you are waiting for results. It's a joke. Nobody gets results as an inheritance. You get up and start walking on that water. It's as you walk on the water, it begins to part. If you are waiting for it to part before you walk, you will die there at the Red Sea because Pharaoh is coming. Tell the people of Israel to move forward. The Bible says he parted the river with the breath of his nostrils. Did you see his nose physically? It was a revelation that was given to a man. So he was standing and waiting for them. And I can imagine Moses coming. Over 2.5 million people. In the next five minutes, you can be a dead man for bringing such a stupid news from the presence of God to people who know that within 24 hours the chariots of Pharaoh will come back to kill them and Moses said look this is what God told me move forward now Bible history tells us that they start they entered the water and started moving when you watch your films or cartoons they just show the water part and the people smiling you don't need faith to smile and move when you can see dry land someone had to enter and say look if you people don't see me again, know that I died believing. And God says, that's the person initiating me. Trust. Himarama. Hey. Himaram. You are seated on the throne. Himaram. You are seated. Listen, if you had seen me 15 years ago, there are people who know me. Some of the things you celebrate today was not there. Everything was in the loins of the foolishness. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Who told you you are the first to be given that instruction? Are you the first gentleman to be established? Oh, I'm taking it easy. You know, a, a job has not come yet. And uh, you know the way we are. Please! I'm not a stupid person. I understand responsibility. The key to fruitfulness is, Lord, I trust you. If I perish, let it not be that I perished in armed robbery, but I perished. The first crusade that we were going to, no money, no nothing. We had just about 20 people. I've shared it with you. Some of our ladies were climbing the tree, firewood. Yet God told me one day I will bless nations. 
and people are climbing firewood. Don't use today to judge the prophecy on your life. It's a, it's a costly statement. Never use your result or lack of it now to mean God did not speak. When God speaks, he does not speak now. He looks at Gideon and says, Oh mighty man of failure. A man hiding under a chair. I'm bringing you intelligence tonight because there are many great men and women refusing to step out especially some of us brothers i don't just mean step out carelessly this fear factor must be broken nobody gives you guarantee when a generation of guarant of guarantors open an account i need a guarantor do business and i need a guarantor what if something happens move on with your life start the building project this risk averse fearful mentality is a sign of carnality it's not play it safe in the kingdom you play it as you trust him when god says move brothers and sisters you close your eyes and step on that water and start moving if it be thou bid me come and he said peter come come peter you've never done it but it does not mean it can not be done there are many of us today there are many of our families there are many of our fathers who would have completed their building project now god spoke to them 10 years ago they had hundred thousand god said go it can buy one tipper of sharp sand go and pour it on the land there and intimidate the devil say no 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 you know we're intelligent people we went to school you don't build like that and it's 20 years the person who was a mechanic at the back of your house now has five houses but somebody who cannot trust god listen the raw material in god's economy is faith 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 not uncle not auntie god uses men but it comes from god through men to you when you want it from men you will die like a chicken are we together second key trust let me tell you something except it's not the god of heaven you are going to walk with no matter who assures you in the flesh get set for fatal disappointment god himself will orchestrate an event where all the strings will be cut and he will say walk have you seen how children walk no matter how you love your child a day will come you must allow that child walk and truthfully speaking the child will walk and even fall down and injure the person that does not mean walking is not a possibility you clean the wound and say stand up continue walking you don't tell people oh sorry you were building the house and rain washed it or you know or, no the church has become a weak place no results because we cannot trust God I trust God though, except I don't hear him if God says move there is no devil no devil in hell no devil in hell that can stop you because it is as you move that you commit you. your step of faith puts pressure on his integrity to prove to you go and ask any great man in the kingdom nobody gave him any assurance all this auxiliary faith you see people i love god but what they mean is there is one uncle the uncle promised me that when it gets too hot i should run back no you are not standing by faith after two days you are disturbing everybody calling everybody and saying look i, I trusted god it's just that uh, the way this thing is no you are not serious i mean if i perish i perish lord i would know you for myself now if you don't give me this rent let me sit outside and you would think it's a joke you are bringing your mattress outside to sit and god says ah this realm of trust gone are the days we used growing up we used to hear strange testimonies quarter to shame god vetoed with his integrity but now you don't hear those testimonies again because we never trust god that far we never trust god that far I was sharing with the school of ministry students uh, I can't remember when years ago when I was in Kaduna I, I went to do something in Kaduna and I was coming back to Zaria my transport money was not complete I'm not saying you should do foolish things you do them at it as his word my transport money was not complete I was hungry 
and I said I'm standing at the road here and there's no assurance that anybody will give me transport there is a little restaurant there and food there is 50 naira why stand and die here at least let me satisfy one of the two I entered and I ate beans and yam 50 naira I knew I was in trouble brothers and sisters I remember standing at that road and the Spirit of God spoke to me he said stop a car and enter I stopped a vehicle and I entered to Zaria I didn't say hey, please I, I'm a man of God there is a call of God on my life it's not clear now but I want you trust me if I rise you will rise too if I eat you will eat too that's what we are doing now and we call faith I started engaging a conversation with someone when we passed Jaji and we were on our way coming then later the man the driver now started asking people to gather their money together and give him I knew I was in trouble but I knew I was not alone are we together now money can fail you men can fail you but his presence and his word will never fail never fail never fail if your confidence is in what you have in your bank account then something is really you are on your way to being frustrated if your confidence is because of one gold you bought and smuggled under a box or one one shoe or one whatever it is your confidence must be in the name of the lord his presence are you getting blessed tonight do you know the gentleman i was talking with just said ah don't worry he didn't even ask me my name don't worry and he brought out the money for two of us paid i dropped at um what that place flyover flyover i stood there at least what I had, I, I can't remember whether it could bring me or not. And the Holy Spirit told me to enter a bus again. I entered a bus, someone paid it. I stopped at Northgate with the same money I was at Kaduna. It was a message. Listen, I've done stupid things in my life. There are times that I believed God. Well, now I don't know whether it's God that spoke to me or not. But I remember trekking from Area BZ to First Bank. By faith, believing there's money in my account. They were paying workers and I joined them. And when it got to my turn, they said there was no money. I was not embarrassed. I was walking my faith. I didn't use that. I knew that one day, no problem. I went there and they said, sorry, are you expecting a transfer? I said, yes. It has not reflected. No problem. After wasting two hours of my time, I thought it was a waste. But now I know it was a school. It was my school fees. I was paying my tuition fee in the school of faith. Because there is nothing that God says today that cannot be done. Listen, you don't grow just by reading the Bible. There must be an experience that will force you. Force you. For as long as all you are doing is just reading and quoting and counseling people. Counseling is easy. But one day God will say, Mr. Man, you have been encouraging people to walk on that water and you have been sitting down today walk on this water and you have to stand up and walk everybody say Lord I trust you say it Lord I trust you say it one more time Lord I trust you government cannot assure anybody insurance cannot assure anybody this person talking to you is not daft. I understand these things. None of those things can ensure you. A man who trusts the Lord can watch his house on fire. And other people are saying, hey, catch him. Let him not have hypertension. He say, me? Hypertension? Where is the hand that built the house in the first place? I, I don't regret, but he will enter and dance and rejoice with tears coming out of his eyes. He say, I can't lose sleep. Because my God has infinite supply. Now, that's a man who has been walked on by the Spirit. High blood pressure, depression is a sign of not trusting God. Period. It's an uncomfortable truth, but know it. There are doctors here. Ask them. Young people now, you see somebody of 21 years entering the hospital and talking to himself. Is it this room? Is it that? Are you, are you okay? He says, how can I be okay? Life. No. You don't trust God. So everybody wants this auxiliary thing. 
ladies are looking for a man who has an evidence now shoe car estate it's a joke brothers are looking for a lady who is working to wage them while they are looking for a job look at what society is becoming a pastor is looking for quality members now we select the sheep it's not just god that brings the increase god brings the increase we choose we throw away some sheep to die then we choose the quality sheep make them whatever it is a pastor or elder or whatever to pin them down and we say we have faith that's nonsense faith is when weak people come to you like david in the cave of adulam and you tell them look i see the grace and the hand of god in you and after three years you produce signs and wonders and they bless them there are people today god has used me to lift i will never be hungry till jesus comes now you would think uh, he's just lucky no sir no sir the beauty is always at the end of it when you start out with god brothers and sisters you must trust him pray one minute and say lord kill unbelief your ministry will depend on his word to grow your business stop harassing people to bless you give you money support you please believe in the name of the lord and let him trust you says while he was going Lot went with him he followed him several things started happening in his life and he said look let's separate and he was on his way going no child do you know how many years Abraham waited from the time of the word to the time of the child you have only waited two years and nobody rest again Lord, you promised me that my husband is coming in 2015. What happened with that vision that I saw? That he has not landed till now. You have prayed, you have sown seed. You see, that's what it is. See, people, you harass every man of God around you because they are the representatives of God that you see. Where is my husband? Where is my breakthrough? And God says, look, wait thou on me. I will bring my word to pass. I, no, no, no. Oh God, look, I need time. It's, his age is not on my side. How old are you? Are you learning something the price of trust trust is hard work let me tell you something about trusting God there are times you will ask him questions he will not answer you will ask him questions about other people's situations he will answer but he will never answer you on the matter that's God for you he is the God I serve you will counsel someone now and hear him expressly and counsel the person and say my God and say Lord I've been talking to you about this issue of my family then he goes silent again then another person comes you you can almost think it's a mistake that you are backsliding until another person comes for counseling then the heavens are open and you are hearing clearly and suggesting things and someone is sending you a text and saying pastor alpha you are one of the greatest men of god i've met and you are saying lord look at this text and I'm crying that you come and wipe my tears in this area and he keeps quiet every time God is keeping quiet he's watching you <sighs> every time God is silent I want you to know he's watching you you know that song please take it lower my voice I want to sing the song the keeper of Israel He'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over me. The keeper of Israel. 
He'll never sleep nor slumber. He's watching over. Hannah, where is your child? My child is in my trust. Coming. My child is in my trust. Benina is laughing at me. Don't worry. My child is in my trust. Young man, where is your God? Where are the results? That at your age, nothing is working. You are making it look like serving God is a mockery. Don't worry. There are times that God will allow people to finish talking nonsense. Then that's when he comes in. Majestically and lifts you in a way that everyone will see. But many of us don't trust him. Let's admit it tonight and cry for greatness. This ministry you see, by the grace of God, is a product of trust. There are some of you who have lost things, lost loved ones, against the prophecy God told you, keep trusting. Are we together? Keep trusting. Keep trusting. Because when you hold on and trust him, overnight, he will route your breakthrough truth to a, another way that you never thought possible. Pay attention to what I'm teaching you. I'm speaking to you by the Spirit tonight. Because there are people here. This your complaint and shouting around everybody is not a blessing to heaven. You must learn to smile in the midst of the storm. It's a sign that you trust him. There is nothing happening to you today that is new. Apostles have not eaten. There was a time in the Bible women were eating their children. You are not that hungry to cut a beautiful baby like this, our baby, and eat. Do you know what the Bible says? Can a mother forget a suckling child? Two women ate one child. What hunger. Then it was a turn to eat the child of the other one. And then the other one said, no, no, no. And the, the other woman said, not so. And they met a prophet of God. And he said, by this time, tomorrow, is the training that takes time. The manifestation happens overnight. Don't ever call God Jehovah Sharp Sharp during training. You are joking. Sharp Sharp, sharp is during manifestation, not training. This foolishness that flies around the body of the body of Christ that is making us fools. We want everything today. Once there is a little delay, people say you don't have faith. Be careful. Many of the things you call lack of faith is a process in the spirit. I've done a teaching here called the fullness of affliction. Many people are, are, are talking their nonsense. Let, let me tell you, I'm old enough to know what speed and process is. The path to the throne is the cross. You will never dodge the cross and arrive at the throne. If what you saw was a throne and you can't remember the experience of the cross, start running away because that's not a throne. Satan wanted Jesus to dodge the cross and get to the throne. Jesus said, not so. There is a protocol. So brothers and sisters, when you are carrying your cross like Jesus and they are saying, physician, heal thyself. You healed others. You raised others. What is wrong with you now? Don't answer them. Jesus didn't open his mouth, wasting his time. He just continued, carrying his destiny. Are we together now? Because let me tell you, brothers and sisters, behind every glory, there is a story. You are writing your story now. Don't be ashamed of it. Keep trusting. Don't be ashamed that you didn't eat and lie. No. People get people get sick and go and hide drugs they hide drugs and swallow and come and say for 20 years no don't be ashamed of your pain you are writing your story tomorrow you will stand before everybody and say you know me you know Saul you know Paul ah. Lord you took my pain away and then you gave me joy you're my peace, my melody in the center of the storm. You gave me a brand new song to sing to you. 
That's why I will lift up my voice and sing. Yeah. seasons in your life what you are running away from today you will miss it tomorrow what you are going through today is what will sustain your greatness hear what i'm telling you i'm speaking to you by the spirit don't run away from your pain carry the cross pay the price pay it honorably don't tell lies i cannot afford gary now it doesn't mean i'm irresponsible i'm a tighter I trust God. I'm walking my way with integrity to fruitfulness. There are so many packaging and lies. You borrow 100,000, buy a shoe, buy hair, buy a shirt, buy suit, buy Bible, buy iPad, and say I'm in ministry. Or God, walk it slowly. You may, you may take pap for one week. Don't be ashamed. If a visitor wants to visit you, don't beg your friend to go to his house and say, that's my house. Don't be ashamed of your father. Your father is a carpenter. Your father is an iron bender. <coughs> you are lying and saying your family are abroad. Don't ever, don't be ashamed of your pain. It is what validates your testimony tomorrow. When you rise and people say you faked it, someone say, I knew him all. I knew that brother when he was tightening and soaking Gary. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Christians, hear me. I know that you watch those who were your classmates. They are going and God is saying, wait back. Don't, don't cry. Don't ever find yourself crying. Because one step with his voice will over. It will give you 10 years result overnight. Many people will insult me for what I'm telling you now because it's an unconventional path, but that's the path to the throne. That's where we follow to be where we are today. Rejoice not over me, my enemy. Stop this life of lies and packaging. No, the word is working. Whether you see results or not, if you are sick, go to the hospital with honor. The healing ministry is still on your head. It will come, it will manifest. God told you you will be a bishop over churches in nations. And three years into the ministry, you have 20 members. Don't lie and write online that you have 30 branches and 50 people. Why fake what will eventually be real? Lord, I trust you. Oh, I trust you. I trust you. I trust you. And I rejoice. I'm not ashamed of my pain. I'm not ashamed of where I am. If all I can take today is Gary, I take it with honor and pride. If you visit me, you will join me taking that Gary. If you think you are too big, no problem. I honor you, but don't rush my seasons. Let me go through it. Let me go through it. I know we started ministry together. Now you have 1,000 members. I have 10 members. Our anointings are not the same. The higher the anointing, the deeper the call. The higher the anointing, the more, the greater the weight. Unhealthy comparison. All kinds of things destroying the body of Christ. When you want a genuine anointing, you must be ready to dig deep. You must be ready to dig deep. There are times God will tell other come to sin. Other ladies will be moving and God will say, you, stay back. And you say, God, you have started with me again. God said, just walk with me. See, let me tell you, if your walk with God does not cause you to ask questions, you are not walking with him. Because you, you walk with God one day and say, God, what is this? Then it keeps quiet. You are reaching your breaking point. Because a day will come, you say, Lord, whether you ever bless me again or not, since I've come this far, I've, there's a way you enter fire, it burns you, there's nothing to burn again. What made you cry yesterday is what will make you rejoice today. That's spiritual maturity. That's why you see men, somebody persecutes you, 
and says, Pastor Alpha is not he. He's, he's somebody who is doing this and that and he doesn't even pray about it. You have sat in that fire long enough. That fire has roasted every flesh. There's nothing left there again. This overconsciousness, the need to explain yourself, is a sign that you have not been broken in his presence. Many people see manifestations like this, like what is happening. They desire it. They put their hand on their head. And then they think all to get it is to package 10,000 naira. Is that what you pay for the school fees of your, your, your school? You package 10,000 naira and no, you can take an anointing but not a track record. The track record must be, even husband and wife, you won't pass through this together. No matter how close you are, when it comes to this journey, let me tell you, I know you love yourselves, but God will isolate you and put you. It's amazing. A husband and his wife can be married, but be going through experiences both of them cannot explain to themselves. That's the dealings of God. That's why you must be sensitive. That's why we say people must be born again to marry and serious with God because of these seasons. A time will happen, you get up in the morning and see your husband like a madman strolling in front of the parlor. Don't think he's stupid. It's not depression. It's a season. Even him, he cannot articulate the name of what is happening to him. And women like knowing, my husband, what is it that I'm not cooking well for? He says, look, you are too innocent to be carried into this furnace. Just stay there. When I win, I will let you know. And the man says, this is the valley of the shadow of death. I can't watch you and my innocent children or whoever just stay there. And you see him wake up. Time to eat a delicious meal. He just turns that plate upside down. And there's no appetite. Listen, the training of a spiritual man is hard. This is why you talk about them in the secret. God will punish you in the open. You don't know what a, It's a covenant. Pain is a covenant in the realm of the spirit. Psalm 50 verse 5. Gather unto me my saints. They that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. For every time you cry and still trust him. It's a covenant you are entering with him. You may not know. For every time he did not show up. And people say, where is your God? And you frown back in shame and say, Lord, I didn't have an answer for them, but you are still my God. It's a covenant you are entering. Somebody insults that altar is a joke. I taught you on altars last week. No, sir. That's why when you hear certain men of God talk, you think he's pride. You may not respect them, but respect the blood on their altar because there is blood there god will not give you a mic and call people just because you think you have been in ministry for years no sir you don't like tonight's message it doesn't look very nice i show you the making of spiritual people you want fruitfulness it's not just a key point a b c d i'm leading you some of you i'm revealing to you what you are about to enter because it's a season god said it's your year of triumph Welcome to the season when the other side of the training will start. It's not a cause. Listen, listen, hold on. There is a difference between temptation and trials. Listen, let me correct something here. God never tempts people. Where you see tempt written with respect to God, it was an error in translation. Temptation is a trap. Trial is a test. It's an exam. God will never tempt you. The goal of temptation is to destroy you. The goal of a trial is to build you. Are we together now? When those seasons come, do not think it is unusual. You want power. You want grace. You want to prophesy to someone. You want to speak over people and let them come to testify. Brothers and sisters, it's not suit and tie. It's not designers. It's a track record. It's blood and tears and pain. You want God to give you the wealth of nations overnight? It will not happen just by luck. Everybody say trust. <laughs> say trust. Genesis 17. Let's read from verse 1 to 6. Thank you, darling. Genesis 17, quickly. Genesis 17, 
When Abraham was how old? 90 years old. Bible students, how was he? How old was he when God called him? Help me. 75. 90 years old. Abraham had not yet seen that promise and that blessing. And he was still walking. God came and just reminded him. Hey, my God. When Abraham was 90 years old and nine. 100 minus 1. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk thou before me and be perfect. You are reading to verse 6. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and I will multiply thee. What? Say fruitfulness. I will multiply you after waiting so long. I will still do it exceedingly. Verse 3. And Abraham fell on his face and God talked with him saying, we are reading to verse 6. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Abraham, remember the discussion we had in chapter 12. I came to remind you that it's still in force. Although your life has not seen it, continue. Don't give up. Let me tell you how to know God is leading you. Sometimes in the midst of that fire, help will not come. It's a reminder. You know how an alarm is. Tan, 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 tan. I know that fire is roasting you, but just calm down. I'm still alive. God, where are you? I've always been there watching you. So he's reminding Abraham, thou shalt be a father of many nations. Just an updated translation of Genesis 12. Read on. Neither shall thy name anymore be called Abraham, but thy name shall be called what? Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Verse 6. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful and I will make nations of thee and kings shall come out of thee Abraham continue Abraham continue it's been five years so God every brother that wants to come to me you drive him away God says I know exactly what I'm doing just keep walking why are you doing this to me and God says continue to walk brothers and sisters there is one thing I can tell you the dealings of God with men is like pregnancy you've seen a woman pregnant a woman does not throw away her pregnancy because she's vomiting blood because she's coughing because she's doing whatever you will still carry it whether they are twins or triplets you won't beg that one child should come to your head because they are heavy you are still going to God has put an exact position where that child must stay if you had a choice you would transfer it to your head to make it easy but that's not God's way you will leave that child here that pregnancy will twist you you who used to be a nice beautiful lady still carry the pregnancy the pregnancy will force you to want food that is smelling smoke you who will not even eat food but now the pregnancy has so deshaped you and redefined your appetites keep going because when that child is born, it is the giving birth that will bring people to you. They won't just come to visit you for nothing. Except God has not spoken, you will see triumph this year. Forget whatever it is that is happening. Except the God of heaven has not spoken, you will see it happen. I trust him. I trust him. I trust him. Trust him. Show us the ancient past. Would you lead us along eternal highway? We want to walk in the footsteps of Jesus. We want to enter your rest. Show us the ancient past. Would you lead? eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus we want to enter your rest I wish I didn't have to preach this today I wish I could just tell you all there was to success and fruitfulness 
is just drop money receive an impartation let it roll you on the ground and all of a sudden listen this is a painful key to a sustainable destiny there tonight there's no male and female if you want to pass through that room you are genderless when it comes to that that deal you won't say reduce the training because i'm a woman there is no woman in this process because you are working with your spirit you will pass through don't let your tears stop you. <clears throat> you may cry, oh, but continue. God is speaking to someone. Don't let your tears ever stop you. Don't let the naysayers bring words to you and say, I thought you claim you are called. And then because of that, you now say, okay, let me organize a seven days prayer meeting to prove to these people I'm called. God didn't send you. You are now compounding both fullness of affliction and temptation. You are joining them together to kill yourself. No. Satan came when Jesus was hungry and thirsty and said, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to bread. He had the power to make it happen. He said, no, I don't have to prove it. The voice has already declared it with power that I'm the son of God. Trust 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 submission brokenness then the next step trust please sit down let me give you two more and then we'll pray fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation write it down the third key to being fruitful is an encounter with the spirit of revelation when you trust God and you begin to walk with him he will use your life and use everything around you to begin to expose you to the manifestation of the spirit of revelation the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation is not knowledge the spirit of revelation brings you into not just an awareness but um how do i put it now it is it's really the word intercourse is the word koinonia a sharing together with that information such that you are not just aware you become an expression of it the spirit of revelation god begins to show you how things work and because you are already broken and you are at your low estate there will not be pride and argument you will listen he will speak to you he will guide you precept upon precept he will lead you to a book a book by a man of god you would have never bought in your times of pride but now because you have been broken you will go and sit down and settle down on that book you are learning while you are learning nothing yet as at yet is happening but you are building knowledge understanding revelation insight insight is very important if you must bear fruit listen the birth of anything valuable is painful anything valuable you don't mind gold on the surface right you dig deep there are certain levels of insight no matter how much you are a christian god will not just hand it over to you at a platter of gold there is a posture you must take in the spirit to appreciate it so god will wait you may hear a man of god preach it but it will be unfruitful to you until a season activates the need for it then god now begins to bring you that revelation and it starts making sense yea Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you have been reading it. You recited it when you were in Sunday school. But now that you are reading the valley of the shadow of death, that scripture means a lot to you. I fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And the word comes with light. I remember the time we gave an instruction to dance. I know that many people didn't do it. Do you know why? Because there's no need for it in their life. You see, 
if I give you touch light in the daytime, you will appreciate me and just throw it away and even forget where it is. But if Nepa takes light, you'll be looking for your phone. The slightest light, you will crawl and not be ashamed to look for it. It is wasteful to supply people light that they have not yet communicated a need for. They won't appreciate it. You know, growing up in ministry, I always wondered why in pastor's conferences, when a man of God is preaching, he can say something simple and you see pastors crying. They are usually the ones standing up when a man of God is preaching. And someone there is just laughing and say, Kai, this man has energy to be standing up. Then the person laughing now marries a pastor. You see that? And after five years of hellfire, the next time they go for a conference, they say, let's wave our hands. The person is rolling. Just wave your hands to God. And say, I can't wave my hands, oh God. Wave my hand is what I do in my room. I will roll here because you have now seen the need for that revelation. Some of you, what you are hearing today will not be applicable to you today. The Holy Spirit will store it in a bank. It will be after four years. Huh? Four years. One night, you will pant after this message. You will find it. You will gasp for it. You will borrow phones, borrow lantern, and sit down and listen to it. The price of revelation. The Bible says, buy the truth. Everybody say the truth is costly. Say it again, the truth is costly. Yes. It will cost you time. Listen, you don't attract to your life what you love. You attract to your life what you respect. To love a thing is to find it desirable. To respect a thing is to find it valuable. There are two different things. You never attract to your life what you love. You attract to your life what you honor, what you respect. To love a thing or a person is to find that thing or that person desirable, an emotional connect. But to respect a thing is to find it valuable. It's a right for these words are faithful and true. I've been a student in the school of Revelation. This Bible you see, when I'm lying down to sleep, it's on my bed. When I wake up, it's following me wherever I am. Forget how old you are seeing it like this. This Bible has, I've worked with this Bible for a while and I have found secrets therein. Secrets that can turn any man to become every word that God spoke concerning him. Nobody will spoon feed you. Thank God for devotionals. Thank God for um, Esau. Thank God for concordances. But brothers and sisters, if you want to know God, you want to grow in the world, you have to sit down. This spoon feeding of believers. Now, I, of course, I'm, a, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not against access to devices and things that will help us. But there is nothing that will replace sitting down in one place and giving the word time. I'm too busy, I'm too busy. Then you see your life knows diving. They are life to those who find them and health to their flesh some of you open your bible only on friday during koinonia you close it on friday only to open it on friday again or on sunday that's not a good testimony let me tell you you will need to be serious with the word of god this is like a treasure chest your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word I will forever sing your praise. Your spirit opens to me the treasures of your word, and I will forever sing your praise. I will sing, I will sing of the wonders of
whatever you spend time with you become that thing you spend time in a beer parlor you become a drunkard you don't become a <laughs> pilot in a beer parlor you spend time in a beer parlor you become you spend time playing games computer games you become a computer game professional you spend time in the farm you become you don't become a doctor you spend time in his presence you become an envoy that's what happens a testament that the word of God is alive spend time in his presence don't say I'm busy doing what God gave you 24 hours to seek him if you are seeking him properly it is enough some of us are snoring away our destinies when we should be seeking him some of us are eating away our destinies when you should be seeking him some of us are gisting and gossiping away our destinies when we should be seeking him i'd like you to pray and say lord restore my passion for scripture pray pray before we continue restore my passion for scripture i don't know what happened to me but lord restore my passion for scripture the excuses that i give the laziness this spiritual inertia that came upon me and is making me barren and unfruitful in the world you are a pastor pray this prayer twice because you can be studying the bible just to get messages not to encounter god and not to grow you are a man of god here you are a ministry pray twice Hallelujah. Psalms 82 verse 5 to 7 says, They know not, please give it to us, Psalms 82 and verse 5. They know not, neither will they understand. It says, they walk on in darkness. And all the foundations of the earth are out of course. I want us to look at verse 5 in Amplified. If it's possible, please give it to us. If it's not possible, then we'll just go. Let's look at it. I want you to see the way Amplified puts it. The magistrates and judges know not. Neither will they understand. Listen, they walk on in the darkness of complacent satisfaction. And then he says, all the foundations of the earth the fundamental principles upon which rest administration and justice are shaking. Let's go back to King James. Verse 6 says, Have I not said, regardless of your state, it does not change my prophecy. Your lack of revelation and understanding robs you, but my prophecy still remains the same. Have I not said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High, Verse 7, tragedy. He says, but you shall die like mere men and fall like one of these princes. So I have said you are gods, but it doesn't mean you will manifest it. Between prophecy and manifestation is access to revelation, understanding, the working knowledge of the word, the epignosis we call it. Many times God delays your lifting to help you understand the laws you are, you are going to be working with like tools. God delays your lifting to help you understand these laws. You don't learn these laws when you are on stage. No. Life is very unforgiving for the unprepared. So he delays you a bit. Yeah. And keeps you so that you will learn it. You never knew that praise was a weapon. You thought it was something they do before messages come. And then in that cave of Adulam, the spirit of revelation comes to you and says, look, praise is not just about singing songs. Dancing is not just about moving your body. Clapping is not just about making sounds. And he begins to teach you that your tears are a mystery in the spirit. Your laughter is a mystery in the spirit. And all of a sudden, you see situations that can crash your life down and the spirit of God tells you laugh. 
Now, because you know this law, you will not think you are, you are, you are, you are mad. You will laugh. Do you know in Psalm 2, let me show you something about laughter. Laughter is a mystery. The irony is that every time God wants to judge, he laughs before he starts judgment. Psalm 2, give it to us. Why do the hidden rage and the people imagine a vain thing? Next verse. The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. Verse 4. He that seated in the heaven shall do what? Help me. Shall do what? If we ask promise, come. If I ask promise to stand here and I say promise, talk to us and all of us start laughing at him. I mean real laugh. Some of you, the way you laugh, if someone, he can even cry just watching you laugh. Now imagine all of us keep laughing at him. What do you think will happen to him? Let me tell you something about laughter. Laughter is a weapon that disarms the devil. It's a, it's a dangerous spiritual arsenal that believers do not know. The Bible says, rejoice in the Lord. And again I say, rejoice. When you see people under the anointing, you see them laughing. You know the trouble that they were complaining of before they fell under the anointing. They are laughing and they stand up and they are ashamed of themselves. They are cleaning their powder and they are, they are, instead of them to rejoice, whatever made the Holy Ghost to make you laugh, don't you think it's a good thing? Because when God laughs, start rejoicing but the enemies his enemies who have made themselves your enemies as i'm going to be showing you now he that seated in the heavens shall laugh the lord shall have them in derision verse 5 after laughing then he shall what speak to them don't worry this is a ministry of signs and wonders you know that then he shall speak to them this laughter you see that is happening is by the spirit don't think people are faking it for those of you who are new it's the it's of the spirit right remember the bible says and the lord walking with them confirming the word so as the spirit of god is speaking this is what is called this is not a miracle these are signs and wonders is a ministry where as you are speaking there is a grace for performance it's a sign to both believers and unbelievers to show the level of accuracy of the person speaking and to show that this is truly of God. Are we together now? I'm explaining it to you. So you see, she's not the only person who will laugh. You'll see people laugh all around, but it is by the spirit. You can't sit down and be laughing like this. That's a beautiful lady. If she should watch herself laughing like that, she will stop. So this is by the spirit. It's all right. Let's, let's continue. After laughing, after laughing, what do you think you will do? Then she shall speak to them. In what? So that laughter was not just because he's happy. He's laughing at what he, as a, as a principle. Before, you know how somebody's about to beat you. <laughs> Let me just smile. That's what God is doing there. It's in your Bible. I'm showing you mysteries. Mysteries that, are, that's why the first sign of the spirit of depression, ask doctors, is the absence of laughter. When two people are fighting, what's the first thing that disappears? Not love. Laughter. Laughter. So you turn your way, I turn my way, and the devil is happy. But all of a sudden, you see your result, or your boss tells you we are going to downsize people, and your name is on the list. We have been eyeing you, we are hoping to drive you, and now that we are found, and you just tell him, God bless you, sir. You say, I I'm talking and you are still smiling. No, no, I'm not smiling at you, sir. I'm just, God is faithful. I'm smiling because I know my God is alive. Not a sarcastic laugh, but a laugh in confidence. A brother comes and said, I've changed my mind. I won't marry you again. It's okay. To God be the glory. You can laugh with tears coming out of your eyes. Just do it. It's a mystery. It's not about I feel like. You are engaging a mystery. Where you tight, you don't feel like. You are moved by that revelation. Listen. There are many cheap pathways to victory in the spirit that we do not know. Some of you hate those that are always happy and laughing. The Bible says a merry heart. A merry heart. Not just a merry mouth. Not just a merry faith. 
your heart can laugh too. Your heart can be happy and it will show. I'm not talking of this clownish thing. You can be happy. The joy of the Lord. This depression that many of us are carrying, you don't know that depression is like a door that you open for the spirit of darkness and it sits on your destiny. You never see me frowning and pulling my face as if the whole world is falling. God is alive. Two of us can't be awake. If he's awake, I sleep. Mm. Laughter. And then judgment follows immediately. There are times what you need to do is to write a request of all the things that have mocked you and laugh before God and say, Lord, I've cried, but I won't cry again. And laugh before him, switch to dancing, switch to praise. Musician or not, if you cannot sing, find this high Igbo praise. High Igbo praise. Those people did not produce that album for money. You, you, you see the consecration in their lives. You know they meant it. The, the, the scriptures they quote before the song starts. That's, that's called warfare praise. Don't let people tell you there is no such thing. Right? Psalms 149. Let the high praise of God be in their lips and a double-edged sword in their hands. There is a warfare dimension of praise. When all else fails, switch to praise. Dance your life and turn every hell around. The same way Yoruba people dance before a rich man. They play drums and dance. He wants to enter his car, they call his name and shake their head and dance. Before you know it, he will reach out to his pocket and bring out what he did not plan for. Was it not a lady that danced before Herod? What is it about her dance? She danced before Herod and removed the head of a prophet. What is troubling you is not a prophet. Can I remove the head? Kenneth Copeland asked Bishop Oyedeko and said, you claim we are the ones who mentored you in the word of faith. But why is it that God has given you this increase? So much members. And Bishop Oedeko said he danced every one person in this church into that place. See, let me tell you, I don't like dancing. God, I, I, you know, you look at me and you know that I don't have that gift. But it's a weapon. Do you use a weapon just because you like it? You use it for efficiency. Efficiency. Knowledge of the principles of the kingdom so you know what to do your rent is expiring that's not the time to pray wrong spiritual approach no it's too late you would have been praying since you saw the signal you have been having a lot of dreams the moment it is quarter to shave don't pray dance rejoice please learn this thing I'm teaching you the weapons of war he said with wise counsel make war Dance, quarter to shame. Get one koinonia message. Get one worship team people. Come and give them honorarium. Let them record something and sing and dance. Put it in your pocket. If all your phone has is movies and games, you are not ready for life. You must have these arsenals in place so that the moment the devil strikes, you know the song already, you bring it out. Hallelujah. And you watch battles turn around overnight. Overnight. Battles turn around overnight. Listen, you want to be fruitful. The longest period of your waiting process will be invested in knowledge. Spiritual intelligence. Knowledge. You have trusted God. You are humble. But let me tell you, the classes of the realm of the spirit is not semester by semester. You see that? It's a product of many things. God's course is not three credit load. It is your desire that can turn it into three credit, six credit. You can do a lecture two weeks and you have finished a class. And the next class is two years. You stay there. God's classes is not like a, an exact period of three, three months. No way. You can be two years in a class. It will give you break. Then you do another elective and call you back. Not to a higher cost, the same cost. Let's continue. Lord, I thought we finished. No, we finished what? Let's continue. But when you are done, you will see the value of that thing. 
for a student you can miss a few lectures and read quickly during exam and make up in the school of the spirit you miss one class that class you have missed will show in your destiny that lecture you did not attend the floor will be very clear in your destiny God's God's dossier for attendance must be hundred percent even if you have graduated and you have 89 percent you must complete that remaining that's why some of you will be embarrassed that after many years you see God drawing you to certain things that you think are basic just walk with him walk with him and sit quietly and let him deal with you you think that you have finished the issue of the flesh and then one day as a great man of God God calls you for a fresh lecture and the theme of the lecture is crucifying the flesh and you start again don't fight him be humble and stay say Lord help me you thought you have overcome loss for money and then after 20 years of ministry God asks you to go for a retreat and you don't talk about pride whatever God says I just want to kill the influence of mammon and you say Lord I thought when I started with you he said we didn't finish that course I only gave you a break or you stop attending lectures but now that you are ready to come back you don't do superstar with God if you miss lectures for 10 years the day you meet with God again you go back and continue from where you started now men don't expect you to go back this is the challenge I have with celebrities who become born again someone was a secular for instance a secular musician are we together now and then the guy gets born again and then you bring him to church and he's already used to the flamboyancy of stage life then you make him music director no way if he comes to church he must join if you have a foundation class he must go through that principle and learn and know god that his gifted is not enough is he spiritual it takes time to be spiritual you don't impart spirituality hallelujah everybody say revelation say knowledge when you see a man that is full of light and revelation when God gives the green light look at David David was in the wilderness and God kept training him with the sling the moment it was time to destroy Goliath he went with confidence when you shake in the time of battle it's a sign that you are not sure of your arsenals are we together now and he defeated Goliath effortlessly my personal goal is to have access to the mysteries as many if not all that I will need for my life and destiny and to fulfill God's call for my life so that no matter what arises before it lands is meeting a mystery mysteries are not words that i coined out that's the name of the system of god's operation he operates in mysteries matthew 13 verse 11 it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom matthew 13 11 it has been given to you we do business in this kingdom on the strength of the mysteries that we know someone looks at you and says promise you will never rise in this life that person is not just making an empty statement. That person is speaking on the strength of something, maybe divination. You don't just stand and say it will never happen. It will happen until you have a mystery, an understanding, something you know that can oppose it. Are we together now? Yes. If I push this guy, he should fall down. But if he's stronger than me, he can create another force that will resist whatever I'm trying to do. Then he will stand. You don't stand in life not holding anything and dare the devil and dare witches and wizards like many arrogant people are doing in the body of Christ. If you know you have power, come and kill us in the village and you hear silence, no answer. The only thing you see is that after one week, the only thing you can do is to see. You can't talk. You can't stand, you can't stand up. You can't walk. That was the answer. From the realm of the spirit to you and saying, be careful make sure you see God before you stand before Pharaoh but by the grace of God with the training you are receiving here let me tell you I pity whoever rises against you one dance 
one dance one hour of proper dance in the presence of God will crumble that person to his knees I tell you this don't just hear these things alone a devourer is coming you pick up your tithe and say Lord I am a tither I am a tither I stand as a family we are tithers my business is a tithing business devourer I rebuke you and Satan says he knows he knows he understands you can be a tighter and he will still destroy you you speak based on knowledge the Bible says knowledge uh, how did he put it wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times what do you know that can bail you out in this period of languishing recession and pain What do you do when you are the only person who is born again in your family and everybody is opposing you? Do you know there is something you can engage? Please, everybody, say after me. Excuse me. Say after me. In the name of Jesus. What I need to do in the face of danger, in the face of challenges, I receive access to it. It is costly to stand stupefied, watching life, not knowing what to do. He said Jesus himself knew what to do. Jesus himself knew what to do. You find out that you've been married six months. People are asking you, Madam, we are not seeing anything. Don't worry. Don't start getting angry and saying, what is your business? No. Just say, Lord, I give you thanks. One year, two years, three years. It looks like no child is coming don't start being cynical and see every woman with a child and you are angry and saying they are laughing at me no father i give you praise start practicing the law of honor you see pastor alpha and his wife and their child what do this child want oh this child needs a shoe you quickly go and buy the shoe you are engaging mystery see waiting for things to change i told you is the secret of frustration you engage you only wait when you know you are engaging. Some of us have been sitting waiting. If you are waiting to know what to do, then that's wise. If you are waiting for things to change. Apostle, nobody is coming to marry me. Engage, engage, do something. Engage doesn't mean to travel and go to a married man's house somewhere. To engage means find someone who has married find a family find one mother somewhere you see our mothers all around one day you can find a mother package five for life package something wrap her and say mommy please i see that you are married with seven children they are all alive and they are responsible that grace upon your life i've taught you commanding result these are the various mysteries you must be trading for you to rise and you engage it the woman will just hold it and say my daughter may God bless you I bless you I remember it was Pastor Corey de Komaya that was sharing a story he has twins and um, um, was Bishop Aremu of living faith you know I think they have twins too and one time his wife was with the wife of Bishop Aremu and then she looked at her and said Yusef uh -uh, you've not given birth to you've not given birth again and she said mommy no and she took her veil and stoned her with it say take twins job like joke that's how she was pregnant with twins and gave birth with twins there are mantles so there are people who are careers of your prayer point bodily they are working in it when you know how to tap into what your portion is you will find out that where, what is killing others you will walk over it there's no food in your house you find somebody who has enough to give and buy one mudu of gari and take to his house it looks like it's, it's not it's not correct but that's how we rise in the kingdom the lesser you have 500 naira left don't wait till it's 20 naira i don't know how one tier how much one tier of gari is you buy it buy lollipop for the children you don't even have to tell them that's why you came just like boy take once they open your lollipop and they're taking start rejoicing they are engaging a mystery. 
brothers and sisters those who don't know the mysteries of the kingdom are the ones who remain you enter a place to start a ministry nobody knows you you are a young minister find the greatest ministry there orthodox or pentecostal quietly go and worship with them whether you believe what they are saying or not sit down under that atmosphere when you worship with them try to see if you can gain access to the man of god if you cannot put a small seed and sow, that atmosphere must open for your ministry because you are tapping into a grace you go to minister somewhere and there is a man of god with an unction higher than you recognize and honor him don't enter there and just say well we are all here and uh, i hear this person is around don't be stupid many young people do that and their heavens are closed and for that ministration they struggle you enter there are elderly people you appreciate them you are a small boy or small girl that god gave grace don't ignore them i appreciate everybody here and you find out boom your heaven is open but you go there arrogantly and you see people who are you may have more revelation than them it's not about revelation it's about status it's about a track record in the spirit are we getting blessed for every dimension you desire there is a mystery that controls it find out learn it find out it won't come as a gift it's a by the truth it will cost you you found out that nothing is working financially in your life don't say that's how every young man is it's a lie let me tell you the truth there are people look at me i say it with all humility there are people who have conquered poverty and lack forever it will never return till jesus comes make no mistakes of believing that everybody is struggling don't take people's humility for granted to think they are struggling there are people who left the realm of financial struggle since you tap into it listen to the materials don't sit down and say I mean, we are all young people we're not i'm not talking of job listen do you know many people in the kingdom don't prosper god's way very few people in the kingdom prosper god's way so when they hear people like us talking like this they think we're just talking nonsense there is a way god grants you prosperity that no devil no gate of hell will turn it around not up today down tomorrow you are up and you have gone never to return back again may that be your testimony but do you know the key you want to start a church please help the people shouting outside you want to start a church you don't know the key to leadership there is an exceptional leader somewhere learn the mysteries we are going to rise up to pray shortly i thought i'll be able to just um, take the last part but then even if we stop here that's all right access to light the mysteries of the kingdom the secrets of champions there are people who taught certain things in the spirit and receive certain strange results here on earth strange results i have seen people with a grace nothing finishes in their hands they may not like promise was saying when he was raising the offering they may not be able to give you 100 million now but you will never come to their house remember what i was sharing last week a woman you see one mama selling akara with that akara she can bring out hundred thousand and give you you are doing three jobs hundred hundred thousand yet your money finishes there is a grace listen the final thing I'll talk about very quickly is tapping into certain dimensions of grace. Some things cannot be taught, they are received. But it's not just general anointing, Holy Spirit, come. Mm -mm. It's locating people who are carriers of these dimensions. It must be working for somebody close to you. Have the humility to see it. A gentleman met me some time ago and he said he wanted to buy a car. I said, really? I said, so what are you doing about it? And he said, he's saving. I laughed. I said, that means you are not going to buy a car forever till Jesus comes. You see a young man and ask him, you want to buy a land? He said, what are you doing? He said, I'm, I'm planning. Uh, for now, I have 100,000. You don't buy land by saving. You buy land through favor. Whatever God gives you is not what you keep to buy land. Is what you engage correctly with that brings you to that level 
Now, many mainstream people again are going to insult me for this thing. I never forget all those stupid preachers because they collect land and money from people. But I tell you this with the integrity of God. Psalm 45, 44, verse 3. Give us Psalm 44, verse 3. Let me show you how to acquire if God wants to give you grace. God wants to give you land. This is how it comes. Read if you're a Christian. One to read. By their own sword. Uh-huh. Neither did their own arm save them, but thy right hand and thy arm, the light of thy countenance, because thou hast a favor. This is how it happens. This is how it happens. There are graces you must tap into. You don't have by default. The baptism of the Holy Spirit will not bring those graces for you. When you have revelation, part of the things that revelation will give you is the ability to discern. Dr. Mike Mudo calls it wisdom. The ability to discern difference. Ah, I've been a roommate with promise. And I've noticed that my job pays more than his job. But he's happier healthier with a lot of money is in my presence i watch people bringing favor it's a sign that there is a grace operating let me tell you something it may be your husband it may be your wife it will not jump on them just because it's your wife or husband you must consciously tap into it are we together now if if um come marcelina if marcelina has a grace for supernatural favor i can stand as an arrogant man of god preaching with no favor but through knowledge i want to be fruitful remember i want results i'm talking of extraordinary fruitfulness i will discern how do you discern observation observation of recurrent results in people's lives are a sign that there is the finger of god a woman has four five six children all of them are responsible and you know that it's not that the parents could train them well. There is a grace. You're about to get married as a young couple. Go and meet them. Kneel down. Help her. Make pepper soup. Do whatever you do. Mommy, bless us. You say, ah, no, don't worry, my children. Don't allow all that greeting to distract you. Kneel down and remain there till that hand comes on your head. And you, you can sow into her life. You can say, Marcelina, sorry. Let me just help you and worship. Ah, no, I won't do this. You are a great woman of God. No, even if you are the person that got that person born again, with respect to what you want to receive, you are the lesser. So you must humble yourself to receive. Are we together? And you tap into that grace and that mantle lands on your head. You start producing extraordinary results. I'm like a fisherman. I know graces that are needed and where they are found. And when, I, when I'm pursuing a grace, I'm not embarrassed. That's what took me to Canaan land, to go and meet Bishop Oyedeko. That's what took me to Joss, to go and meet Renard Bonke. You, you fish unashamedly. You don't receive impartation from colleagues. Promise, promise, we are, we are, uh, I remember when we were in secondary school. Can you bless me? I'm seeing something working in your life. What's it? Can you imagine? <laughs> Can you imagine what he's doing? <laughs> Hallelujah. I didn't realize what he was doing. Praise God. There are people who are very foolish. Some of you, your parents are carrying the grace that you need for your next level. But you have not discerned it. You pass them every time. Mommy, I'm going for fellowship. May God help you. And she keeps wondering. When she was your age, 20 men were looking for her. You are almost twice her age. Nobody is coming. Tap. Tap into it. Somebody who lives in your neighborhood, all he has is primary school certificate. Yet in your presence, you are, you are joining others to say his money is, is charm. Because naysayers always find explanations. Once they see someone blessed, they have to find something and say, that thing, eh? you see, eh, Jimmy, just leave that guy. That guy, is, uh, is a, there is a spirit. 
don't see every young man who is blessed and just think there, is, there are spirits all around this is the end time be careful be careful don't allow cynical people rob you of your blessings when you find out that there is a grace it doesn't have to be from a high man of God some of you this night if you can turn and look at your roommate that you have been fighting with every day in the midst of that fight there is a grace tap into it be the one to cook the food tomorrow what's the occasion I noticed three of you in this room there is the hand of God on your life sir I notice there is no week that passes without you being favored I want to tap into it. you may not have money you have polish you can polish a shoe you don't have money you have soap you can wash find one socks whether it's clean or not soak it again and wash it Lord this I'm washing every nonsense out of my life results results your father may be a harsh man your mother may be a harsh man but you have never seen them beg for bread there are results in that area look away from the imperfections some of you your pastors may not have the revelations you have you even have higher revelations than them don't worry there is something they carry there are people no matter where they go to in less than three weeks somebody must find them and favor them they have this grace for territory send them to the valley of the shadow of death before they land there an angel will be waiting there look for them and bless them so is it there are many people who want crowds look for mission agencies around there are mission agencies there are orphanages you want God to make your children correct that their brains will be working well find an orphanage buy one bag of rice drag it there and meet them the children may not tell you thank you they may not even recognize you you are not doing it just for that tap into it. I'm showing you how I live my life you engage mysteries and come back home and start dancing and rejoicing it's like a charm that has called all the blessings they start following you and bulldoze any mountain standing by themselves the principles will fight their way to bring the result to your life listen if you are here and you are looking for a job and you don't have a job start engaging mysteries now otherwise you will never get one please hear me are we together especially for brothers I'm waiting for a job you will wait forever engage mysteries if you don't know ask questions you want to start a business all you have is capital and a brain you are going to lose let me advise you don't even waste your time to start there are spiritual things we engage go and listen to my message spiritual intelligence settle things from the realm of the spirit before you start anytime you are in trouble don't start running to meet people physically settle it in the secret place you are in trouble the landlord is about to come and throw you out there is trouble your parents are going to court leave all those those things are shadows enter the secret place and correct it if it's something you need to invoke mercy invoke the mercy of God I've taught you about the mercy of God the mercy of God will turn is is God's divine partiality you should hang in the cross everybody knows you engage that mystery things turn around in a way that will surprise you hallelujah you see students here those who are students they will write exams they will not answer the questions but engage the right mysteries they come out from the exam cgpa 4.8 CGPA 4.7. You think these things are just guesswork? No. You engage mysteries. We are going to pray. Our time is gone. But I want you to cry for fruitfulness. And I want you to cry for discernment. Discernment to know how to tap into graces. Don't sit down and be barren. I've taught you brokenness. I've taught you humility. I've taught you trust. I've taught you revelation. You must camp around the knowledge of the mysteries. And then I've taught you how to search for anointings and graces that will fast track your life. Rise up on your feet and cry passionately before the God of heaven. Shabbat.
Show me, give me encounters. Lift your voice and start crying. Lift your voice and start crying to God. Show me, show me. Open my eyes. Lake Parado Capraska Dabalakaya. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Show me the mysteries of wealth. Show me the mysteries of increase. Show me the mysteries of fruitfulness. The mysteries of restoration. The mysteries of peace. Show me the key, O oh God, to making things work in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The last prayer point, look up. Let me tell you sincerely, and I want to tell you this with all humility. Most of the graces you will need to produce the results that you need are available in this house it's just that many of us have not had the discernment to tap i like you to cry to god and say the grace that is deficient in my life that is responsible for this stagnation i open up my spirit through honor i open up my spirit through honor lift your voice pray this with wisdom the grace for the gift of man the ministry of helpers. Listen, I know that our time is gone, but I want us to pray. Listen, I want you to know that this house is a house of mantles. This house is a house of strange graces. You know, just last week, the Lord did something in my life that... He did something in my life that almost brought tears. I said, God, what is this? What is this? What are you doing to me? And the Lord spoke to my ears and said, I would do it to anybody who understands this. It's not the individual that is making it happen. It's what is on you that is producing it. Listen, I want you to pray before I pray for you. 
don't be arrogant there is something deficient in your life that can cheaply bring you to seasons of results you have seen it work in this life you have seen it work in this place lift your voice and cry from your heart and say lord i must tap into it lift your voice up on Sunday and every time these seasons come usually I don't think of what people do for me I just think of the faithfulness of God in my life and I kept thinking meditating all through this week and I just felt that if there is anything I can do to the body of Christ is to pray for you you have prayed for me but I want to pray for you there are things I carry I've seen very few people carry it and I don't know why. You don't have to kneel down, stand. I want you to believe it. I have seen certain things in my life and I've seen very few people and it has pained me because these things are for the taking. There are dimensions of graces. But this, this pride, please help me, James. Well, this pride, honestly, brothers and sisters, hear me. If you believe in this prayer that I'm praying for you, it will change your life. This thing you see is an election of grace. I may be a young man, but there is an ancient mystery on this person you see. I want you to believe it. You have taken all the shame. You've taken all the disappointments. You've taken all the pain. You've taken all my sorrows. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my sufferings. You've taken all my tears. You've taken all my weakness. Nina Yimaka. Nina Yimaka. Sujana. Nina Yimaka. Don't, don't sing. I'm praying for you. You've taken all my sadness. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my limitations. You've taken all my poverty. You've taken all my dishonor. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my limitations. You've taken all my struggles. You have made them yours. You have made them yours. You've taken all my sadness. 
You've taken all my tears. You've taken all my sorrow. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my struggles. You've taken all my fears. You've taken all my weakness. You've taken all my mountains. You've taken all those mountains. You've taken all my mountains. I give you, I give you, I give you my highest praise. I give you, I give you, Lord, for everything you've done in my life. Lord, I give you, I give you, I give you my highest praise. I give you. I pray for you. The power to prosper. There is such a grace called the anointing to prosper. I stand under this apostolic and prophetic mantle. You have been part of this ministry. You have been part of this vision. From the depth of my spirit, I release that mantle on your life now. Take it now. Take it now. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. The power to prosper. I release it from the depth of my spirit.
dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline